All right, great, great. We're just going to take a, a, a moment just to let everybody come on in. I'm so excited on today, and I know you will be as well. This is Dr. David Render here uh, for Healing at 4. So as you know, we try to get us right on the close at 4, 4 o'clock hour uh, Pacific time and do what we got to do. Uh, a great, amazing guest. Um, look great, great sit down, had a great conversation, and we're going to do what we got to do. I'm just going to take a moment to share this. And just get all, just woo, just getting everything, just just going here. All right, wonderful. It's really good. I'm I'm very excited. Um, got a lot of great great notes and, and great 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 things written written out. And um, just to get get more set up, it's really good. So let's let's see here. All right, and we're just gonna take a few moments. Uh, to just get things get things rocking and rolling. Okay. There we go. All right, wonderful. And now I'm going to save this here. It was really great, really, really great, really great. I'm really excited, really, really, really excited. Really, really good here. And then I'm gonna just uh, share this, share this here. Let's see if we can Let's, let's, let's see, we should be able to share this.
Okay, wonderful. Okay. Whew. All right, had to get, had to do it to it. Yeah, man. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I just want to, I'm just going to go ahead and, and begin, and I'm sure uh, Carlos come on inside and everything like that. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Great. Uh, let's see. We're going to go ahead and do it to it here. We got Carlos. Let's bring him on. My God. Good, good. good. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Can, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me all right? Okay. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, great. Good, good, good. So, I think there's like some, feedback, some feedback. Can you hear some feedback? Maybe not. I'm good on my, on my side. It sounds fine. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Can you hear me? All right, we'll just, I'm just going to put on this headset right quick because I can hear you perfectly, but it's doing that. Just we'll just rock and roll like this. It'll it's it's a lower it's a lot lower. So it's like, <laughs> great. <laughs> so no sweat, no issues. So wonderful. So I just want to before we begin, uh, Dr. Carlos, I just want to say thank you for taking this time. It means so much. I'm very serious about this. Um, you know, getting on other professionals' time, other people's time, and really just regarding that highly. So I really want to just highly esteem this time that you could be a wonderful benefit to the audience, to the people that will view this. Um, you know, many times I was sharing with a young lady out of, uh, uh, out of Ghana and um, she was just sharing about, I was letting her know more about the show and things like that. And, and I was sharing, she was saying it was very scary because of therapy, because he said the show and what you're doing, it's it's therapy and therapeutic. So she was in Ghana, but she was like, look, that's, that's scary to take on the issues and the problems. So I was like, yeah, this can, I, not to um, you know, scare people with that, but really open that forward and, and bring people to the table um, in a safe environment. So uh, with that being said, um, um, uh, where are we at? My gosh, I'm, it's so much. I'm just like, this we can is go anywhere. Else, right? It's I, I know this. I'm just trying to see see where we want to bring it. Okay, great. So so this is for healing with Dr. David Render, and and definitely the people that are going to view thereafter, Carlos. I mean, it, it's some powerful stuff. I'm getting some great feedback, which I knew I would, but it's a lot of in private things that go on with people's lives. You know what I mean? Um, one thing about it, I know you've been in the red up industry for about 10 plus years is that about right so introducing uh dr carlos garcia also as well veteran consultant within motivation business inspiration but a plethora of years of experience so i'm just going to open up the the table and say thank you for um uh just showing up and definitely having a powerful phone call session so so go ahead i don't want to dominate go, go ahead go ahead now, we'll get spinning but go, go ahead well, thank you, David. I, I really appreciate you having me. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm honored. Uh, I'm really happy you reached out to me. And, you know, really any opportunity that I can take to talk about psychotherapy and, and, and you know, that is one of the scarier words. But any time that we can utilize a platform to talk about how do we better ourselves, whether we want to call it coaching, whether we want to call it therapy, counseling, I mean, we can call it whatever it is. 
Ultimately, it's about improving ourselves from within. Ultimately, it's about removing those obstacles that are in our way and, you know, just taking any approach that we need to take to get us there, right? And so any opportunity that I can get to really speak to, put a face to what a psychologist is, right? Um, it, you know, it's not so some, some old guy with a white beard and a, and a you know, uh, having you lay down on his couch and, and, and talk about your mom and daddy issues. That's just not, that's just not what it looks like. <laughs> so you know, sort of flipping, flipping the script on, on what therapy is, right? Let's, let's modernize it. Let, let's, let's make it hip. Let's make it new. And, yeah. and that's, that's what I'm here to do. Man, I love that. And I'm going to just, while you're talking, I'm also writing notes. I know, um, just to share this with the audience, um, I, I grabbed a, a, a lot of great gems uh, when we was able to speak on the phone for the first time with you. Uh, I loved how your pace was when you wanted to, of course, know more about me. But we hit it off really, really great, I, I felt. Uh, even within just sharing with you, you know, I was, I, I tend to believe I was very uh, transparent about it, but my uh, trials or barriers or challenges that I faced uh, just within a veteran and as well, you're, you're a veteran as well. And if you would just let the people know your, your veteran background and how long you were in, that would definitely be great. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was in, I went in like two weeks after, after high school, David, I, uh, you know, towards my, my senior year, I felt pretty lost. You know, I had all, all my friends sort of getting ready to go off to college and doing their, their college essays. And, you know, there was this thing about me that I sort of felt like, hey, I'm, I'm not college material. You know, I, I don't have the smarts for that. Um, yeah. And this very limited sort of thinking that I had, I had found myself wrapped up in at an early age. And so I said, you know, what else can I put on my resume that would be really cool? Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Marine Corps. I said, all right, you know, let's let's do that. This looks pretty high speed, pretty cool stuff. Jumping out of airplanes and all of that. Uh, that's what they sell you. But, but that's oh, yeah. what it is. <laughs> that's what we sold, baby. That's what, it, you know, what is the Air Force was was aim high. You know, that was in the 90s. I went in 05, but, you know, it was aim high. And I still, it was like, man, you're jumping out of buildings, you know. And, and then they show all of a sudden the, the academic, you know, the graduate stuff, you know. They, with the, you know, they're like this. And, you know, they're like, you know, it just... So, so, and then all, you're in the uniform, and then you're, you know, maybe on the battlefield, but they, they may just show you on the airplane, just in the in the air, and then in the sunset, riding in the sunset. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so, that's uh, so that's how they got us. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's how they, 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 <laughs> so go, go ahead, go ahead. This is great. This yeah, is great. That was, so much. Go ahead, go ahead. You know, two two weeks after high school, I found myself, you know, in, in boot camp in the Marine Corps. Um, and it was an excellent experience. It really was. I spent eight years in there. Um, you know, got to do some really amazing things. You, you develop a, uh, you know, not not only sort of that camaraderie, uh, a sense of belonging, but some of the the qualities, some of the, you know, those values that they instill in you. And you're you're very familiar with this. They, I mean, they're with you forever. I mean, they're in you. They become such a part of you that that you don't see them as a different entity. They just are a part of who you are, right? And that courageousness, that bravery, that uh, sort of never say die attitude, right? You you take that, you know. And so it was a wonderful experience for me. I mean, you know, um, I think I can look back and say it was wonderful. There were obviously, you know, there were there were some deployments and there were some some different things and. Uh, that you know my unit was on, um, but but overall, looking back on it now, I, I, I don't think I would have done anything differently. You know, I um, I think it's great what you was just sharing because I saw the picture online, a couple pictures, but where it had more, I understood. I showed my wife too, um, where it showed the trans. I felt like it was transformative moments with you, where you were in the 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 Marine Corps garb. 
then you had your you was a firefighter. Now you was a firefighter. Now I'm a, I'm gonna skip over it, but we're gonna go back. So you was a firefighter. You was Marine Corps firefighter, a little bit like like older there. That after eight years, then boom. Then you was in your boom graduate now, and then you was in your suit, the full dream, the full flow. So can we speak to that? I mean, I thought it was great. I mean, I I was on Instagram and everything. I I thought it was great, just showing those transformative moments, and in each one of those. It, it, here's what I, I want to share this part right here and I wrote this down it, it was like in the Marine Corps you was with of course the Marines is wa- you know the water and air but you know dealing with the water and land then you jump to dealing with fires yeah. then you went to academia with the books and then you went to the full dream the full flow you know which is not the, like when I say be all end all that's not saying that's the end but even breaking in a new chapter. So I that's how I under I saw it. I was like, wow, that, that spoke to me how you kind of went from here to here in those I'll just say quadrants, yeah. but it, 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 it didn't separate you. It's bringing forth like the totality of who you are today. Can we speak to that? Absolutely. And and listen, David, I wish I can sit here and say to you, when I was 17, I had a dream. And it was to do all of these things, and I did them, and I feel it wasn't that. It was something, what I have now come to see that is much more profound. It was life bringing me different opportunities at different places, and I mean different places mentally, emotionally, for me in my life, where I made decisions. My life has been a series of of decisions, of choices, right? And so especially for young people out there that get so wrapped up in, you know, where am I going to be? What's the path I need to take? Where do I need to go? Listen, stop stressing that and let it come to you. Those opportunities are going to come to you if you stay woke as the as the young and say now right if, if you stay just open to, to the possibilities then then there's nothing that can stop you the one thing that did was with me the entire time was the passion the passion to know i'm going to be successful i may not know what that looks like just yet but i know that i'm going to be and try to be the damn best at whatever whatever that is yeah, yeah. And, then, and then I just followed my heart. You know, I, I, I followed what felt right. And, and the military was there. And I said, you know what? I want to do this. I'm going to regret if I don't do this. And then, yeah. you know, my dream was actually to become a police officer like, like my brother. Oh, I got you. I got yeah. you. My father my he was family. a police officer. Yes. So, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And then I get a phone call from a buddy. He's like, you know, just gotten on the fire department. He's like, man, why do you want to be a cop? People shoot at you. They hate you. No, <laughs> Come work with me. I'm, people think you're a hero. You get all the chicks. I'm like, yeah, well, let's do this. I mean, that's literally, you know. So, I mean, life is, is just full of these things that come your way, and, and, and it's a series of choices, you know. And, um <laughs> But I, I've made the best of it, and I think that's that's where a lot of my joy and contentment comes from. Wow. You know, I, I, man, my gosh. You know, I love how you were sharing about just that uh, going into, like, the woes of people or the things that people think about, like you said, with the youth, um, even in people that's in their 30s or 40s, which is still still young. And, and may not have all the answers dealing with career moves. I know one thing about it, I'd say four over different professions and careers and things that bottomed out didn't work, I mean, and had to build up. So when you shared, um, you know, you're saying, hey, look, relax, you know, hey, just get, get a plan. I really, I really, it spoke to me, you know, very strongly because I know um, – you do different talk sessions and um, with other, you know, business leaders and other entrepreneurs. And, and of course, the, the psychology of it is encompassed in that. So, I, I, you know, people need to hear it in this generation. I feel very like not, not to the Warhammer to crush them, right. but to really just already say, hey, look, 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 you know, get out of that. 
So yeah. before, before you, excuse me, before you, you hurt yourself, you know, you you go into deep depression or uh, suicidal thoughts or or anxiety, you know, or different things people go through, chronic anxiety. They they go right back into these rut moments and and you know, or or long term. It may not be kind of in and out, but it's it's extended times and things like that. But um, I I know like man, it's just we need to hear that in this generation that you know you came forward to speak to to us you know speak to us being a younger generation or and and still be able to have a relatable uh very present and you when you had said uh, when you said let's make therapy hip and and new and fresh you know so it i i like that how you shared like look here, here's where it is and it really seems like you you are really willing to lay it out there to really tell it yeah and when i say tell it not sugarcoat uh but you know how to make it sweet i'm sure but you also know how to be like hey look here it is yeah yeah and and uh, uh you know w one thing that um and this is the power of, of the stigma David, of, of mental health. Um, I'm a psychologist, and so I'm, I'm aware of, of just what a profound, you, you know, sort of how, how challenging that can be for people to, to admit to themselves, I need help, much less yeah. actually reach out. I, I started therapy, I, I think the first time I went to a psychologist, I was 20 years old. I had a lot of anger issues. I had no idea where they were coming from, and they were wrecking my relationships, right? I was just an angry, you know, young man, you know, just no control over myself. And I'm like, this is not, this is not the kind of life I want to live. Like, like, what's going on? So I had to go in there and figure out where that was coming from for me. You know, at another point in my life, um, you know, I started experiencing a lot of depression. Some of that came from, from the military, some anxiety. I went back to therapy and, and hey, let, yeah. let's work on this. At another point, you know, down in my life, my heart got broken, you know, and, and I had reflected back on my last three relationships and said, man, those were not the healthiest relationships like, right. like what's going on, right? And it was no more like, oh, why do I keep attracting these kind of women? I was like, no, 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 Carlos, there's a common denominator here. And <laughs> <laughs> like, go look at yourself first. And, and, you know, I spent nine months in therapy figuring out how my parents' relationship impacted the way I viewed relationships, how my sense of self-worth was showing up in my relationships. Um, you know, six or seven years down the road, again, once I became, um, you know, once I started working and becoming an entrepreneur, you know, getting myself overwhelmed. My, my biggest, you know, my biggest struggle is always wanting to do too much for too many people and compromising myself and putting myself aside, you know? Yeah, I, I do, yeah. So, so what I'm saying is, I, you know, even though I, I've gone to therapy and I've experienced that and I know the, the transformative process, there was still a time where I felt like some shame about sharing that with people. And I really had yeah. to move past that to say, you can't sit here telling people that it's okay to go to therapy and that it's hip and that it's awesome. If you can come forward and say, "Hey, look, this is what I've been through. This is how it's helped me." Yeah, and, and you know, it's 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 amazing how you're sharing it because it's you're sharing it with me. I'm, I'm gonna share this with you. People that even in this room and that view thereafter, because some of these demonstrations and some of the other videos that was done with the other ones, I mean, they get hundreds of views, and people are very, you know. Oh, I'm good. I'm okay publicly, but in private, let me tell you something. Let me share this with you. People really lay it out there on the phone calls or emails or when you kind of already um, have a gift or you're empathetic or just that you, you, uh, a way of communication, connecting heart to heart with people. And let me tell you something. This this is what people need to hear because I know I'm making sure to as you're as you're speaking. 
a lot of times I'm very like visual and I also reflect while people, while they're talking and I'm like, you know what, this is where I was at with that. You know, this is where I was at with relationships, different things when uh, uh, marriage wise years, like this was years ago, stuff that went on and all type of craziness, um, uh, 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 financial issues, you know, decision, different decisions. Can you turn that down a little bit, dear? Just a little bit, just dip it, yeah. But just those, those, those decisions. And this was about, I want to say about five, seven, well, not five, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, twelve years. But the thing is, still to this day, with certain things, I would even say, to be honest with you, even certain things with res residue. And when I say residue, certain things that we uh, maybe post, we go through and then post after it's done. Where you know there's some effects, you know that it's still kind of up here, you know, and then went on right here in the heart and the in emotions. So, yeah. and I, I know for myself that had to overcome. Like, whoa, man, look, you gonna have to figure this out because it's gonna, if not, uh, it's gonna take you out. It's gonna take you out. I know for me, I'm just, I'm just speaking for myself. That's what I, you know, and I'm like, wow. So, yeah. so go ahead, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, no, it was, I mean, it was a pro an, an amazing process of growth and. It, it, it wasn't easy, you know, David. It, it, there, there is so much pain when you have to dive into those deep, dark parts of yourself and reflect on, you know, past hurts and reflect on resentments, parts of your life that you have to grieve. Maybe, a, a, you know, grieving a, a childhood you didn't have because, you know, you, you had to take care of, of mom because dad died or, or you know, your oldest sibling and, and, you know, your parents were working, so you had to take care of everybody and there was no time for you to have enjoyed your time. I mean, I can give you a million different examples, but, like, sometimes we have to read that, right? We, we can't get that. We can't get that. And so therapy has been a, a powerfully both painful but amazingly joyous experience for me because it, it's beyond that pain that we can feel the happiness. It's when we alleviate all of the hurt that, that we carry around inside of us, right? The, 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 you know, the struggles of, of trying to keep this, this, this facade and, and this mask on that we got it, that everything is okay. When on the inside, we're, we're freaking falling apart, right? Totally. totally. So, oh, yeah. you know, having had these amazing, amazing therapists in my life, that's, that's what moved me in, into this, right? Like, like, you know, just so transformative and, and allowed me to become a, a person that, that I can truly now sit here and say, yeah. I love myself. Oh my God. I love that. And truly, truly mean it. Um, and so, you know, it's it's a hard process. It, 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 there's there's some pain in it. But every single one of my clients, and myself included, on the other side of the past, says, you know, thank you. And for this case, it was hard. There were days I didn't want to come. But you've given me the, the greatest gift anyone's ever given me. I was hearing that, I was hearing that feed, but it's all it's all right. I had to take the feed. But um, you're, 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 there we go. Okay, great, baby. That was whew, had me in tears, man. I felt that. I just because because the thing is, I resonate on so many levels. Now and just moving forward, I'm gonna clip this back in. But now moving forward, like the years of just like you know, you gotta deal with yourself. Here we go. When you have to deal with your stuff, and and not not blame people, you know, but you know, really just when you said you had to look yourself in the mirror, and I, I I'm telling you, I, the like certain things I remember years back. I was, I'm in the mirror, and it was a lot of time, I mean, not just metaphorically, but literally in the mirror, like literal, literal, and um, just like, all right, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? Because 
it, it's there's it's just uh, the poor decisions, you know, social things going on with uh, responding the right way. And and one thing about it, I know for myself, I was like, you know what, I need a whole lot more wisdom. I need a whole lot more just wisdom, um, understanding, discretion that I may that I may live, you know. And when I say live, uh, not only my physical, my physical man, physical being, but just the the health in my mind, mental health. And um, so I can get balanced because, you know, life will, as you know, you know, you speak with so many clients and everything like that throughout the years or even recently, you know, um, it can it can throw the whammy. Life will give you the whammy first. And then you got to figure out how to deal with this. You see what I'm saying? It's not like, a well, let me read up on this stuff first. And then once I get good at it first, then I'll then I'll kind of tiptoe into it. And then I'm I'm nice and good. Oh no! It, it'll it'll slap you. It'll slap you with a bag of flour on, on your best day of your best suit, and 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 then be like, "All right, what you gonna do?" And then put the tar in the oil, and then be like, "Dang!" And, and then everything explodes, and and you know it's just crazy. So I, I wanted to um just man, was was there anything else you was gonna? Because there was you know, hey, I, I can go go ahead, go ahead. No, yeah, no, that's a lot. I got some more. Yeah. No, please go ahead. I mean, uh, you know. You know, that you you just captured it there, in, 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 you know, with your words, the the power that this stuff can have of of again therapy counseling. I mean, you know, you hear two people saying, "Hey, I can fully relate," and I bet you if we were in a room with twenty others, they would be like, "Yes, let me tell you about my time when you know." Yeah, my gosh. So you so you had shared um it was I was looking at one of the kind of more of uh the the articles you put forward about your practice. it might even have been a, a few years back, but you shared this and I and I know it still stands today. Um it, it was talking about how your expertise is in uh, growing and healing others, and and I and I wrote it down. I don't know if it was uh, many years ago, but you just put it in a meet and greet bio o- o- online, and it said growing and healing, and and I love this right here. You put emotional harmony. Can we can we just uh, talk about that? You was just saying, hey, these are my what I expertise, my expert in about growth and healing, and yeah. then the emotional harmony. Yeah, so, hey, you know, my, it's interesting when you sort of in about growth and healing. go through different careers and, and different paths in your life. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a, 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 a file on my computer of probably 50 different bios from you know, 10 years ago to, to now, right? Yeah. <laughs> you might need it for this talk or for that talk. And, and it's interesting because although maybe the, the work you're doing is different, there's always a few consistent things in there that speak to who you are. And for me, that's been wanting to grow and wanting to help others. I believe that our, our strength comes in the growth process and developing ourselves and preparing ourselves for each stage of life, especially those hard ones. And so I think the emotional harmony part of it, everyone you know, can talk about the physical. And I'm not saying that these aren't all components. They're all the components that we know, Right. The, the, the physical health, the wellness, the meditation, the eating right, the, 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 the reading the books and all of that. But I've known people to be doing all of that and still feel like they're in a space where they're suffering. That's because the problem is in here. It's an emotional healing that they require, not a physical one. And so for me, emotional healing is about, again, getting, you know, sitting down with yourself, being real with yourself, and looking into those parts of yourself that maybe you haven't looked at. You know, and when I'm able to help people heal that part of themselves, the sky's the limit, my friend. 
they, they take off and soar in a way that they've never been because their heart is now lighter. Their heart isn't carrying all this old baggage, all this old stuff, all this old anger, all this old stuff. Yeah. And so the heart the path is now light. clear. The path is lit. And it's amazing. It's got, it, just real quick, do, do you hear the, do you hear the feed? Are you hearing a feed or you don't hear that? I hear an echo. I hear my echo. Is it, is, man, I'm trying to, because I'm, I'm trying to hear everything you saying. Let me see. I'm trying to get everything. Hold on. Let's see if it'll, it'll stop. It sounds fine now. Okay, it's, it's good to go. We're just gonna rock it on and just go. Yeah. We're just gonna go. So it's, yeah. like, it's all good. We're, yeah. we're gonna make it happen because this is this is great. Um, so so yeah. So like you're sharing, it's here. It's here. So so pick up right there. When you say it's, it's right here. It's not a physical. It's right there from the from the, uh, the, uh, the heart or, or the emotion here. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, there, there's this, there's this, um, this thing that I've seen yeah. with yeah. consistency yeah. across my work uh, over the years, and I've seen people come in from different walks of life, different past, you know, all sorts of different experiences, but they have one thing that almost always is common for them, David, and, and what that is, is a sense of feeling not enough. Yeah. Right. That almost, um, and, you know, that, that, that comes from a different place for everybody, right? My feeling of not being enough came from growing up around a dad who was a perfectionist and was in the military and so mistakes were never allowed, right? Or if you made a mistake, it was like, hey, you know, get your shit together, you idiot, or like, pay attention to what you're doing, or, you know, it's some form of derogatory or, or very critical statement, which for a child who's seven or eight, you know, I know the parent thinks like, oh, I'm just, you know, teaching them manners and teaching them how to be more responsible. But for a child, they internalize that like, mistakes aren't allowed. Right, and I have to. I have to be acting the best, doing the best, always achieving, in order for me to feel valued or loved. And I, right, the, the example I use is the kid that comes home with, with five A's and a B, and the parents are like, "What's this B about? You need to study more. You need." Right? And the kid's like, well, "What? What? You know what happened? All this good stuff over here." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's acknowledge right. But but we become so focused in teaching our kids how to achieve, how to achieve, how to achieve, that what we're doing is we're sending a message that unless they're succeeding, they can't have value to us. That they can't be right. And so imagine if when we're growing up in a in a world like that, what that leads to when we're adults. Yeah, oh yeah. Either, 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 just real, just real bizarre, or, or maybe kind of just, just either like, like, like example, like a, a lot of high success. But if somebody maybe, um, you know, what I think of is maybe critique or really rail on somebody, maybe the project doesn't go how they want it, or a performance um, review, and they lose, it, uh, you know, maybe blow up, you know, maybe it brings back post-traumatic stress or, or something like that, or it just, it's a not good situation, you know, so it, it we, a lot of times it gets taken into adulthood. <laughs> you know? want me to give you the perfect example? Here's a story I always use that most people can relate to, okay? And a lot of the clients that I have come in, you know, they're not suffering from like some severe depression or crippling panic or anxiety. They're just really stuck in life, right? 
And so they come in and they're like, well, I'm not depressed. So, you know, what, what are you with me? I don't understand. Here's a perfect example of what happens. Yeah. Let's say we have a seven-year-old and he's going out to you with his parents, okay? And parents want to start to, you know, have them feel a greater sense of confidence and autonomy. So they say, when we're going to get to the restaurant, we're going to let you pick what you want to eat tonight. Kid gets super excited. Yes. All right. Pops open that menu, sees a big cheesy pizza and says, I want the pizza. And mom sort of says, honey, are you sure? You know, you always get the burger. Why don't you get that? Oh, no, no, no. I want this pizza. What if you don't like it? You know, the, the burger's kind of a safe bet. He sticks to his guns. And the dad says, you know what? We're not getting the pizza. It's going to be too expensive. You're not going to eat it all. Just get the burger. So now feeling defeated, the kid says, fine. I'll get the burger. My question to you, David, is in that moment, what do you think that child believes about his ability to make decisions? Well, first off, the level of just like trying to sway him, you know, he's, he's already excited, mind made up. Um, I, I'm, I'm having autonomy. I can choose what I want, you know, um, and, and, and do that. But it's kind of being smothered out immediately, immediately to turn around like, oh, yeah, we're going to give you this. Go at it. Then when you begin, you already like, yeah, it's now being, eh, eh, and then interjections or things to you know, just just um, persuade not to go in that direction. Right. You know, whatever the choice might be. You know? Right. And so, and so from a, a, a developmental psychology perspective, what we know that child is, is potentially taking from that message is like, oh, maybe my decisions aren't good enough. Right. And so, and so from a, or maybe I should doubt my decisions or maybe other people know better. Right. What we know is that that wasn't an isolated incident. Yeah. You know, that didn't just happen that one time at dinner. That message he probably got in many ways lot of the different areas of his life, probably from the time he was, you know, two or three to the time he was 16. Or and so do you imagine someone like this who constantly be questioned might have some difficulties with decision making when they're a teenager or an adult? Do you imagine they might have some self-esteem? This is the kind of person that when they're when they have to make a choice, whether it's about a boyfriend or a girlfriend or where to go to college, what to do, they have to fault of these early life experiences. Yeah. I think I think I got it. Yeah, I think I got it. It was kind of with the with, with the feed. I think I, I was I clicked on it by accident and I went out, and then when I went back in, it seemed like it it was all right. Because I'm trying to I'm trying to as we're talking, which is like it's like technology, huh? <laughs> look, yes. <laughs> you know, that's a, look as you're saying, I'm like, all right, I'm keeping my mind on track, like I'm there. I just I'm like I want to make sure I'm like grabbing. Every you know, and knock that, knock that, knock that feed out, so I can. This stuff is hard. Get it. This stuff is hard. You know, I, I had a client, a potential client, call me today, and I said, "Hey, look, you know, maybe I have a colleague you can go see." Um, he's like, "Oh, you don't think you can work?" And I was like, "No, I can, but I, you know, I don't want to do, I don't do virtual sessions because when it comes to therapy, like this is tough, and you don't, you can't make that that same connection." Yeah, yeah, it, it, you know. This, this stuff, not stuff, but just these, these, um, you know, exercises, sessions, just also sharing, like you said, however you want to call it, it's how you it, um, you know, it's medicine. It's medicine. I mean, you know, um, words is words is healing. If you the right words can be healing. Let me let me rephrase that. The right words can be healing. Uh, to the soul, to the life, to the mind, um, you know, and then once we get healed up, and not not only not only just healing, but getting get being made whole, and then going after our bed because it's two different things. Right. Uh, right. The, the process of healing, ing, which is painful. If anybody has ever broke anything, cut anything, like you shared about, we was I was just 
you know, nostalgia, looking back and reflecting, the introspect, looking with him. And, you know, these moments of healing and process and development, when holding comes, I mean, uh, you can really go and champion your life. You go after your greatest life, you know, seriously. And, um, you know, that's why I see why I, I know looking looking back and even now, it has taken years of um, just getting a, first of all, processing what's going on, what's what what's going on, what uh, what are the things, what are the things that I know that I may not even know that's there, yeah. you know, outside of the scope of consciousness. Yeah. Like, let's say if this is a, let's say this is a thing or something or event, but it's here. Now you can't see it, right? And you can't see it. It's not in the camera. Let's say that's not in my, my scope, but I it's there. And then all of a sudden, let's just say the therapy or the, the different sessions now, it's there. It's and now bringing it maybe slowly based off of my wanting to receive it. Because sometimes it, it can be right here and people say, Well, I don't see anything. I don't I don't hear nothing. It doesn't it doesn't exist. And I can only imagine, you know, and I'll let you go go ahead and speak to that. I'm sure you've had certain clients that they didn't want to, they were in a, either a, dis, a you know, a, a, a illusion or, or, or delusion or just, you know, not wanting to see. Have you dealt with certain uh, clients or patients with it that really? Yes. I, and I would say all of them to some degree. Uh, and, and here's why. What you're speaking uh, to, yes. David, I, I call I, our blind spots. All of them to some degree. And, and here's why. They're blind for a reason. We all have natural psychological defense mechanisms that protect us from having to see or feel things that are hurtful to us. Or from seeing things that just are not clear to us. My job at the end of the day, working with a CEO or someone who's chronically depressed, is to bring that thing that's hidden to them right here to the forefront in a way that feels safe, in a way that doesn't feel too scary in a way that they feel in charge. They feel like they're bringing that in for themselves. It's their growth. It's their insight. It's their journey. And I'll give you an example of, of this. Um, you know, here's, here's a client that I, 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 I'm, you know, I, I worked with in the past. Young man. You know, very good looking man you know, very fit, um, you know, doing well for himself. And the first session he comes in, he's like, ah, I'm so, you know, I'm just such a piece of shit. Like, you know, I'm always making mistakes and like my life, you know, my life is a disaster and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And I feel like everything I do, I do wrong. And, and it's like, David, for an hour, this bashing of himself. And he's wondering why he's the bite. David, for an hour. So when we start to, you know, sort of take a session or two to discover where, where is he coming from, where is this belief, where did he learn this belief that he is this person? Yeah. He didn't wake up one day, not about himself. Something in his life, somewhere, his environment, his parents, siblings, somehow that message was with, you know, passed on. Cut to so what well, we find out true. is that he was a twin. He is a twin. And he seems to have a little bit more energy than his twin brother. And as a result of that, and I think it's even like some level of, of like ADHD, it's just his brain was wired a little bit differently where his brother was a little bit more calm. So what did that create? An environment where it was always, and I'll use the name Joe, Joe, settle down. Joe, be more like your brother. Joe, calm down. Look how good your brother's being. Joe. And so, you know, Joey, his twin brother, is now getting parents' affection, parents' love, parents' attention. And he's saying, whoa, what's going on here? You know, I, what's wrong with me? Why can't I get that? And so he starts to act out. Right? And the way he gets attention now or became, you know, acting out. Right? And so what he didn't realize was that there was some sort of suffering because for, for a lot of years he felt like on the outside I got together. On the outside everybody can love me because I have money and because I look good. But I don't think 
anybody could ever get close to me and love me for who I really am on the end. That everybody can love me. what's the question? Uh, do, you, do, you maybe, do you maybe have a pair of headphones, maybe? You can uh, possibly, if you don't, don't worry about it, because I don't want to inconvenience you. I do not. No, I can go grab some, but I don't right around. If you, if you, do you know what I'm If you don't, I'm yeah, yeah, let me. Let, I can go grab. Let's, let's, let's see if we can do it. Just right here, yeah. Right here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's try that. Let's try that. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was trying to cut what the name was, but it didn't work, and I had my own spot. So I was like, man, you know what? That was, man, that was good. I was like, ooh, man. I'm going to have to backtrack once I hit the, you know. I might have to backtrack and go back, you know, to get the, get the clear of it. Man, I was like, man, I'm going to have to backtrack and go back, you know, to All right, how about, how about now? All right, let me do it. Let me put my words. Actually, you know what? I'm sorry. Hold on a second. I got the wrong <laughs> Oh, you did go back. All right, let me do it. Actually, you know what? Hold on a second. Yeah. Okay, I think yeah, I think we knocked it out. I think that's it, Doc. Yeah, I, I can. Perfect. I don't hear. I don't hear nothing. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm good on this side. Okay. I was because I knew it was. It's like a Facebook thing, but once you once we did it, I don't hear nothing. I don't hear anything. Yeah, perfect. So, so we can, if there's, a, go ahead. Yeah, I don't, I don't hear nothing. I mean, I can hear you, but I don't hear any, nothing in the air. So, so David, what I'm, what I'm hearing now is like on, on like a real delay. So like. The, okay. Let me do that. Let me plug it in. Cause that's, so that's what I was hearing. Oh. That's what, that's what I was hearing. <laughs> so let me. Let's let me see here. Hold on. I hope it, it cuz now you're you're cl ever clear. Let me see. Okay, does that does that help now that that's in? Can you hear yourself talking still from earlier? No, it's I can I can hear you perfect. I don't hear anything other than your voice. You... Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. No, there's I'm hearing I'm hearing a whole a whole new conversation, like like a you, like a six or seven second delay. Yeah, yeah, you're hearing a bunch of voices, hearing a bunch of the. Let me see. It's like a you, like a six or seven second delay. Yeah, yeah, you're hearing a bunch of voices, hearing a bunch of the. Okay, let me see. Okay, can you into the delay? It's like a, you, like a six or seven second delay. Yeah. You okay, try. Do you want to unhook those and then just see what we can do? Yeah, like once you did yours, even if was, I was... even if I unhook it, I I can still hear it. Yeah, that's what I was like. Dang. Just see what we can do. Yeah, like once you did yours, even if was, I un was... even if I unhook it, I I can still hear it. Oh, yeah, that's what I was like. Dang. Just so, so see what we can do. Yeah, like once you did yours, even if I even if I unhook it, I, I can still hear it. Oh, but yeah, that's what I was like. Dang. Yeah, yeah. Just so, so see what we can do. Yeah, like once you did yours, 
even if I even if I unhook it, I, I can still hear it. Yeah, yeah, it's. Oh, okay. I wonder. I wonder if I if I can if I can still hear it. If they click you back. Oh, okay. I wonder. I wonder if I if I can if I can still hear it. Oh, okay. I wonder. I wonder if I can still hear it. I was like, I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to more and more. I'm trying to listen. I'm trying to get it. And hopefully it. Yeah, my God. Okay. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> Okay, so let's we'll just roll forward. Oh, oh. That's all right. We go. We go. We gonna do it to it. So uh, let's see here. So you know what's funny, David? This just speaks to what we talked about earlier. How you just gotta roll with the punches, man. I'll be trying. Like, <laughs> You make it work, like like that's it. This is life. It's messy, right? And you, just, you wrote it. Like that's life. This is life happening right now. <laughs> I was, you know, and that's and that's this is letting you know, like when I'm, I'm 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 trying to, and I feel like that's probably how I even do life. I'm trying to grab like a lot and soak it in, but there's like these breaks in life where I'm like, all right, let me see if I could just try to maybe just uh, adjust and maybe I can. How about the, you know, just to piece it together, you know, but I I really like try to really strive to have a like patience and not like really get toward an anger toward like when you need to just pump your brakes, just slow that like I try to work on mindfully being you know, life is gonna do it anyway and test you the way it wants to test you, even though you can try to work on things, but it's like I, I try to mindfully let me if I'm in traffic or um, you know I'm out in LA traffic or something out in California it's crazy but I try to mindfully already just say let me let me just go on a drive to where I'm already at like peace even with music to where I won't start getting into it because you know with the environment it can start boosting you you, you know what yeah, I mean okay. it can just start rushing and everything like that like, on that energy. yeah. Yeah, pick up a little bit of so wellness, like, you know, just that. So, yeah, you know, just how life will, when we talk about life already happening first, then see how you respond to it. And, I, and I'd say it probably might be a testing with the audio because I'm like, oh, geez, you know, but um, that's, it's good. It, it's, it's so good. Um, so, have you, so, uh, Dr. Carlos, do you do um, uh, psychometric evaluations? Do y'all call them that, or do y'all call them something else, like within your practice and, um, you know, how you evaluate your clients? Yeah. Um, so I, I don't do that personally. Um, I, I think there's a, you know, there's, there's sort of several different mindsets and, and sort of theories when it comes to the field of psychotherapy. You know, it's evolved from sort of this this art um, to more of a you know a push to, to more of a, of a science, and I can get into the whole you know, but you know I, I can give a client uh, a twenty question exam when they come in about their depression symptoms, right, and score that up and know if they have severe, moderate, or minimum depression. David, I don't care about that. I want to know you did that. Man, life is just gonna throw everything at us tonight. <laughs> you was look, you were saying you, you said I don't care about that. I want to know, and then it stopped. 
I want to know what, what that person feels about their depression. I want to know if they even feel that they're depressed. I want to know, you know, I, 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 I want to experience them, not some numbers. Now, look, there, there is, there's a lot of value to, you know, doing a full sort of evaluation, a psychometric evaluation. There's a lot of, I think there's a lot of information that can come from that. But for me, the only tool I need is to sit in front of somebody and talk to them. Yeah. And know them. Know where they're at. Know why they're there. Know what they feel. Know what they fear. That's, that's all I need. Would you say there's been a, 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 a breakthrough or amazing breakthrough moments once people start um, not just only acknowledge their fears, but process through their fears or maybe start is, is about fear? Is, is that seem to be a heavy exchange with people once yeah. they start releasing that? Yeah, yeah. I, I got to tell you, therapy is such a such a complex process. But if I was to sort of break it down, there, there's sort of these stages. And I think, you know, at the very beginning, the first stage is acknowledging that something is wrong. Right. I mean, yeah, I'm coming to you. I know I'm sort of depressed. But like, how do we fix this? How do we get out of this? And for me, it's like, here's here's a beautiful, uh, very symbolic, you know, Thing that a client used yesterday. They said, I feel like I'm in a pit. And at the bottom of that pit, it's dark. There's no light. You can't even see the hands in front of you. It's scary. There's, there's weird creatures and monsters in there. Then there's this other level where you feel sort of stuck. I've been there. It's, 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 it's dark. But, you know, I know that there's this light up there and I know, you know, I know that that's what depression looks like for me. And I'm sort of over here at the top and I, I'm dying to get out. I need to get out. I can't keep making this mistake. And what he's telling me there is two things. One, I am deathly afraid of whatever's down there in that darkness. I don't ever want to experience or feel that. And two, I am so fearful that if I don't get myself out of this pit and, and, and moving forward, that I may stay here. Now, I work a lot with the unconscious. Do you know what I said to him? I said, then maybe this is why we're stuck in therapy, because I'm wanting you to join me down there in that lowest of dark places and letting yourself acknowledge that you've been suffering and hurting for a lot of years. You've been so focused in on taking care of everybody else that you haven't taken the time to acknowledge, you know, some past pains for you, some past resentments. And I want us to just sit in that dark space, you and I together, and I'm here with you. I'm here on this journey with you. I won't let you sit there by yourself. I'm going to sit there with you, and we're going to talk, and we're going to we're going to just, just sort of sit here and take a moment to relax. And then we'll make our way up. Without the baggage, without all the heavy stuff that you've been carrying around for years. Right? So a first part of that is just acknowledging life is kicking my ass right now. I don't know that I have any more to give. I'm in pain. That's it. That's what I need them to feel at the very beginning. The next component is the part where we beat ourselves up. So not only are we struggling, but then it's like, hey, get it together. Come on, you gotta suck it up. This is not okay, you know? And that constant beating up of ourselves, it's like taking ourselves and, and kicking ourselves when we're down, you know? And so I, I, I help people move past some of that as well. <laughs> So the, the level of patience for you that you possess, what, what would you say that is? Just where you're at, just the, the foundations and you're able to harness that. What, what, what would you call that? Like just that gift or, or just through, you know, through the years of uh, you know, able to able to be uh, uh, transformed or developing to this, this place you're at now. What, what would you call that? 
I call it radical empathy. <laughs> <laughs> That's heavy. That's actually real heavy. And when I mean heavy, not in a bad way, but that's like, that's like, that's epic mode. That's like epic. And, and, and I'm saying that like, not like some, man, epic, but it's really a, a, a real, that's like a, that's a, a, a real place to be at. A real place to be. A real, a real, when I say this word, not, uh, for a lack of better terms, tool, but I'm saying usage. Like, you, like, um, not tool in a bad regard, but I mean a very, you know how like with cars, the, with vehicles, and the hydraulic lift, they're not going to really get too far if they don't put that on that hydraulic lift and then they get to look around how they need to. It's like you're a hydraulic lift. Like, they're going to first drive up and then, okay, lift. And then we can do introspect. We can look around the car. We can look underneath and then see all these different components that you wouldn't be able to see like six inches underneath and trying to do a mirror, like one of the, you know, and all, or the hood or, or trying to go under a dash board of the behind the. So it's, that's how I kind of just look at that. And the, and the hydraulic lift is extremely powerful. Or one of those I had, it got stolen, but uh, I had a Mustang and, um, at a, at a Tahoe, then I got a Mustang, but I had a one of the, the jacks that was not like it was one of those 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 big daddy jacks where you just bam 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 it'll lift the truck, and and that's some people they're just like the big daddy jack they 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 the the boom 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 and now you're lifted now we can do what we need to do other other people. They don't have the capacity, and they're one of these little, little rail, little, little thin, little. They're trying to spin the, the spin, and and, and some people are like a jack, you know, a jack iron, and they can, you know, kind of get them going. But you gotta put some muscle and all this. But there's some they they do this little spin lift, and it takes twenty five minutes just to get this far. And I'm telling you. We we need hydraulic lift and we need some big daddy jacks. Now, you know, mine got stolen, but it, you know, like years ago the car got impounded, and, you know, and, all, and, then, and then they took the jack. But the reason why I say that, you know, um, that I vividly remember that it was a tool that was when I say I was able to do what I needed to do, and it just it was a, a an amazing help of of um, amazing help of support. Um. Okay, here's here's something that that I was uh I, I wrote one of my notes. There's a few things I want to get to, but how important is cognitive abilities in relation to when you gauge people's mental illness or declining emotional function? So, if they have, uh, you know, um, when you gauge their cognitive ability, kind of are they already slumped over? Kind of already destroyed? How important is that when you gauge how their actions are to where severe, maybe severe illness is happening? Does that kind of make sense? I'm, I'm trying to, you know, when they come in maybe to the office and their their behavior is kind of already on the decline, but it's kind of showing you they're in a very severe place in their in, mentally. You know what I mean? Not saying they're diagnosed, but I don't know if you, you know, but you see what I'm saying by that? I'm trying to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, someone that comes in and, and is sort of, you know, kind of on the over and, um, you know, it sounds just doesn't have energy, doesn't have sort of a livelihood to themselves. Uh, are you hearing all that feedback? Yeah, I hear it. I hear it. I hear all that feedback. Um, I hear all that feedback. It, it made me, um, usually, kind of, I guess we I want to talk about what we just did a second ago. Yeah, did you want me to take you off and put you off? Yeah, you know what happened? To, I think when that phone call came in, you yeah, want to call that came in, that's what froze me. I think that might be Yeah, that's probably what it was. I didn't want you. Okay, so do you want me to take you out and yeah. put you back? Okay, all right, great. Phone call came in. That's what it was. He'll, he'll get, I think he said call. Or something like or something I think he was saying. All right, can everything sound okay right now? 
Yeah, so, so uh, you know, it, it's going to show, you know, the, the, the emotional stuff that we carry around. I always say, like, it, it, if, if we don't do something with it, if we don't attend to it, it, it seeps out for us in different, in different ways, whether that's an irritability, whether that's in, in you know, being quick to anger, whether that's, um, you know, being uh, short with your partner, whether that's just not focusing at work, like all of that is internal turbulence that's not being addressed, right? And so we think, you know, oftentimes I'll have someone come in and say, you're like, well, I'm doing yoga and I'm reading books and I'm exercising and I'm doing all these things and I don't know why I'm not getting better. Well, because you're doing everything externally to feel better, but you're not taking a look at what's going on on the inside, right? Yeah. And so all of those other things are not going to matter unless you address that first. But, but yeah, it's, it's going to show up. It's going to show up in our energy levels. It's going to show And, I mean, I, I just, you know, with a client yesterday, had him reflecting on the way he walks into the room now, the way he shakes my hand when he comes into our sessions now versus nine months ago when he was super depressed. And it was just kind of like this, you know, and now he comes freaking strutting in, you know? <laughs> and I wanted to bring that to his attention, you know? You know, I, I, it's like um, I bet it's a great thing just to see, the, like you said, that transformative moment where now it's like full of vibrancy, a strong grip, confidence, firm. You know, just all right. I'm, you know, solidified in what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Ready. You know, versus just a, a limp fish. You know, they try to yeah. shake your hand like a limp fish, just kind of. Uh, and I've seen it. It's been plenty of people that just. Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of your shape. And there's no, it just, and I've seen some do this now. I don't know, you know, just you shake it and it, it doesn't, there's no kind of, it's just this. Yeah, the energy. And I, was, I don't know what that is. I don't, you know what? <laughs> it's <laughs> internal. It's, it might be some internal things, but it, it, you know, that's why I just wanted to just ask you about that. So where did the, the business consult, like, the, the consultant motivation, because there's a lot of motivation that I feel comes forward out of you. Did you really desire to be a, not say a motivational speaker, but just really, you really seem to have that, that zeal, that gusto, you know, as you, um, do you use that as well when you consult or do you kind of gauge as you deal with the person, how you're going to interact with them, that client or? or who? Yeah, I, I think there's, there's several pieces that go into that. Um, when I was in the fire department for about six years, um, I was, you know, something about my life felt off. Um, I wasn't feeling a real connection with friends. At that point in my life, I, I was sort of just like serial dating and, and getting into relationships that weren't the best for me. I felt like I had no passion for life. I felt like I had no direction. I wasn't sure what was going on. I think I was still suffering with some, you know, some of some of those sort of depressive feelings that would come and go for me. I just wasn't happy, David. I, I was, I, and I could, but I couldn't pinpoint it. I was like, man, I have this amazing job. Like I got people that love me. Like, and again, it was nothing on the exterior. It was what was going on for me interior. And that's that I, I, I wasn't feeling like I was living you know, a, a life that was congruent with my values and what I wanted for my life. Um, I'd always been into self-help books, and I think the combination of being in this point in my life where I felt really low and then coming across this book, The Success Principles, How to Get from Where You Are to Where You Want to Be. That's from Jack Mainfield, who's the co-author for all the Chicken Soup for the Soul books. Right. This became my Bible. I read through this and it absolutely just changed my way of thinking, changed the, 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 the sort of fire that had been embers, it just was just unleashed. So I think 
I said to myself when I was done with this book and started to implement some of these things, if I can do this for one person, that's what I want to do the rest of my life. I want to take these messages, these principles, these things that I've learned, not only through my life challenges, through my therapy, through this book, and I want to change people's lives. I want to let them know that, yes, we struggle, but I want to let them know that it's possible to get past that struggle. So when I left the fire department, the goal was I want to be the next Tony Robbins, right? I want hey. to be a speaker. I want to rise to the top, right? Yeah. But the journey happened to take me through a psychology program that was clinically based where I learned to be a really good therapist. And so I was like, oh, this, I'm really good at this thing, probably because of all my own therapy, right? Um, and so I think the consulting piece to get to, you know, to get to your question, the consulting piece was a combination of, you know, here are these really awesome, uh, you know, techniques and strategies that I've learned as a therapist. How can I implement that in business? How can I implement that within organizations? How can I take these messages outside of the therapy room where I'm working one-on-one -on -one to a grander scale on a stage in front of an audience of 1,000, 5,000 and, and help them, those blind spots that we were talking about, help them discover those things for themselves. Mm -hmm. right. um, and I think it also, I had always sort of had a, a, a little bit of a, a, a business um, sort of this business entrepreneurial mindset ever since I was, since I was little. And, um, you know, I, I, I wanted to sort of incorporate that into the work, into the work that I did. So I found this, this sort of niche of, you know, working with CEOs and entrepreneurs and, and, and business owners, you know, um, because I get, I get it. I get what it's like to be in that mindset. I know what it's like to start a business and grow a business. I know the, the, the struggles that they face. And so it, it's almost like a second career, but not really. You know, I, I, I use a lot of the same, the, the same skills and the same theories and all of that, um, but, but just in sort of two different settings. Yeah, you, you had shared, um, excuse me, talking about using psychology to cope with um, crisis, um, if that, because you said the attachment. Was was that now? This was talking about uh, COVID nineteen. Is this something that you implement? I didn't know if you wanted to speak to that because I wanted to just kind of go into that and just um, I read through it, but I just wanted you to share just your, your your flow once you sent that and how you 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 wanted that to be unpackaged, you know, uh, uh, today. Yeah, I I, I think once this COVID thing started to, to hit us really hard and, and we started to all feel a, a sense of panic, um, I started to get a lot of phone calls. Uh, local news stations, you know, just people across the country, people in, you know, um, outside of the country wanting to get a psychologist's perspective on, on, you know, what's going on, how are people responding, why are we responding in this way, like what, what, what sort of your understanding from a social psychology perspective of, of what's going on. So I, I, I've been speaking to this a lot. I actually spoke you know, a little bit earlier today on an interview, but um, sort of what I've been sharing goes back to this idea of, of control. You know, I think yeah. as beings, we function or like to function better in a space of certainty and control. And, you know, it, it feels comfortable in that space. And so when that gets yanked away from us, um, we're sort of left to feel very, you know, very panicked in a state of anxiety, in a state of fear, right? Because now there's so much uncertainty in my life, how am I supposed to plan for it, right? So I, I, I often talk about, like, that's why people are experiencing panic, and when they do, you know, they might experience anger, right? Maybe you have something to say about the person that's wearing a mask or not wearing a mask at the store, they experience a sense of, of, of you know, um, uncertainty about their home life, right? Maybe they lose their job. You know, it, it, it creates panic. The, the, the lack of structure creates panic for us. And so, you know, what, what, I, what I've been helping people sort of work through in that is to sort of understand, like, there's this illusion of control that you live with. You haven't really been in control. 
right? I, uh, I still agree with you. You know, and and like you don't know if you're going to show up to work tomorrow, and whether because of COVID or anything else, they're going to say, you know what, you got to go, you got to hit the road. You don't know if you're going to come home and your wife or husband are going to say, listen, I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not happy anymore. I'm out of here. You don't know if, if a loved one is, is going to drive down to the local pharmacy and, and get in a car accident and pass away. We think we have more control than we do. And we find a safety in that. We find a safety in that. I, I get it. But once we can part ways with that and, and, and sort of say to ourselves, you know, I sort of have to, to sort of surrender to the things I really don't have control over and stop trying to lose my mind thinking that I can just have a tight grasp on everything. Think about all the emotional and psychological energy that, 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 that's required to do that, right? Like, let's surrender to, to, to sort of just the, the way life is that usually when I tell people that creates more anxiety, they're like, wait, what? Just just take life as it comes to me? Partly so. But I want you to think about this. Think about times where there's been a problem in your life. Something significant, maybe something small. And you sit there for hours, days, weeks on end, worrying going through every possible scenario and how you're going to work it out. And in the end, none of those things actually happen. You created all of that distress in your mind. Think about times in your life where you've had a struggle or a problem and it's just sort of been thrown at you and you have had to adjust and overcome and you got through it. If you're able to think of enough of those, and I know that most of us have a series, and, and for some of us, a lot of those moments where we overcame, we were able to do it. We found the resources. We, we, we found the resilience. We found the heart. We found the bravery. We found whatever we needed to find to make it happen. Don't you think that's going to happen again the next time? It absolutely is. It absolutely is. You're going to do it again. You may not know right now. You may not have those resources. You may not know, you know, what's going to come your way. But I promise you, if your past is any indicator, you're going to leave that in the dust, just like everything else you have, and come out feeling more resilient, stronger, and more powerful. That's, you know, that's that's a, that's a strong. That's 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 good. You know, that's really I look at it like nutrients. You know, that's some strong stuff right there. That that'll get you going. And what I mean by that is that'll get. I mean, just that's some that's some power right there. You know, and I'm serious because just like what you shared. I mean. When you was like, when you were sharing, you was like, "Look, is it gonna happen again?" And and regarding the success of it or the, you figured it out then, you're gonna figure it out again. You're and, and the thing, the very thing that's needed or the, the desired the outcome, you're gonna you're gonna hit whatever mark or number or area you need to, to get that thing done and get in more of a viable position economically, financial, relationship, social, whatever, and you're gonna get it. You're gonna do it. And and that really that really spoke to me, um, you know, because I'm I'm, I'm looking here. Um, you had shared, um, did you? Well, I don't know if you, you wrote it or you might have got the information, but the more common reaction, however, seems to worry, panic, and fear. Um, it's important to know that these are normal and adaptive responses to stress. Fear is a survival mechanism, and without it. Uh, we would never have made it as a species. If we encounter a dangerous situation, it's fear that, that makes us leap into action. Without fear, we would not survive long. So there's a whole lot. You know, there was more. You know, there was a few pages. It's, it's really great. I'm, I'm going to definitely use some of that great information just to be like, you know, I'm like, man, you know. The, the reason why I, I really look, I don't, you, I don't know if you might have done a, um, 
you put, I'm pretty sure you did, but I read different guests that may be on the, the, the show. I, I I read their thesis and things that they've done in, in graduate or, you know, doctoral or their PhD program. And when I tell you the 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 gems and nuggets that I have read from people I've sat, I mean sat with, you you think I mean not saying you're you know I think of the best with people. And I'm I'm reading this stuff, I'm like, who I'm sitting in front of the person where I'm like, they wrote that. You know, they, they where did they get that? And and I'm I sit and I, I do a lot of writing and I'm writing I'm writing some research stuff and trying to do like a to research degree stuff in addition to other degree, but I'm just I'm hitting, you know, not stressing about it. It's a joy. It's a joy. I want to put that out. It's a joy. But I I said let me come up with this um you know just how we this this television program and and bring it more into a show um the way I desire to do it. But it really took a lot of research within people's lives and the right lives to speak publicly because. People say, oh, can we, can I sit with you? But it's, there's research and people's real credentials, not only, not only credentials uh, degree-wise, but research goes into the healing medicine and what these humans, what these people are sharing. And I, and I, and I take it very seriously because what's being shared, it really changes people's lives for real. And um, it's, I, I take it to a high regard. And uh, you know, in a, it just—it's—it's it's joy. But I'm, I'm very serious about this because people are hurting, as you know, uh, hurting, uh, uh, panic, scared, fearful, uh, uh, traumatic stress. You know, uh, as you know, what's going on? We got—we're seeing what the protests going on. We see it politically what's going on. We see what you know, and I and I try to just respect people's viewpoints, this and that. I don't, I don't really get hyped up, uh, you know, going to jump into a frenzy. Um, you know, some people, they just, if it's a different viewpoint, they'll start getting into a hullabaloo with somebody. I'm not, but I, I do know some of the things um, that have happened pertain to me in my life with what now, why is this being brought forward with what I'm doing? And um, it, it, it really came with research. That's what it started with, research and um uh, speaking to the heart of people, you know, speaking to the heart. And and not just only stuff. It's it's good though with you know you have just to research some numbers and stat. But 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 dealing with the heart to heart uh where people is at. And and that's that's what we you know in this mode uh to, to bring forward. And and really I'm becoming a just a better person. Um just a better person. And it and I, I really thank God for that. Uh, just man, it, it it's not who I used to be. My mind, it, it's like a, you know how the like the mind, the the I look at I liken the mind unto like a supercomputer, you know, a super very complex system, very complex and not so complex you just can't understand. But it's it's the brain functions and how the mind functions. And and when I say for years I've been writing research stuff, case studies, case notes for years. I mean, hundreds of pages, you know, you know how it goes, you, you know, when you're just, and um, it, it, the reason being is because the next stage is the next platforms, you, you know what you're doing, you know, you're not just in people's faces, just like, look, I didn't spend 10 years from, and I'm in my, I just got, I just got in my early, well, I'm, I'm in my early 30s, but yeah. from my 20s, going through hell, I mean, going through, but but wanting to turn that into research and not just only pain and anger and anguish, if that makes sense. I think that you know, gives value to other people's lives, yeah. Yeah. So, so it, 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 and let's see, there was something else here. It was, can we, can we discuss, and I, you might have said it in the beginning, but I know with the feedback, the imposter syndrome, because I know you said that. I've heard about it. I, I, I get it in a sense, but I want to hear your take, your spin, just your how you sat with clients and even maybe understood it yourself. Like, whoa, you know, just imposter syndrome that maybe people don't know about that. Can we, can we speak to that? Yeah. So, so basically what imposter syndrome is, it, it's this feeling that arises that no matter how much you've accomplished, no matter how much success you've had in your life, it's never enough. 
not only is it not enough, but that, you know, sort of this idea of like, you're undeserving of it. You're a fraud. And it's sort of like you're you're just faking it and people are going to find you out. They're going to figure you out, right? Like, I don't deserve to be here. And I got to tell you, I, that that's something, you know, that, that, that I that I dealt with and, and, and still even up until a few years ago, because for me, you know, something as simple as Carlos, how, what nerve of yours to be interviewed by people or to stand here on this stage and tell people how to not be hard on themselves or teach people how to be successful when you had so many failures, when you're just some immigrant, who, who, who are you? Who do you think you are, right? You better keep faking it because otherwise you don't, you don't belong here. You don't belong here with, with all of these successful people. You're never gonna be on their level. And that, that is imposter syndrome. Right. And, and, and sort of just like, you know, imagine the impact that it has on 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 your confidence to do more or greater things. And so, you know, I, I, I almost sort of intentionally would put myself in uncomfortable situations, you know, to, to sort of just like move past that. But I, I think it's real. It happens for a lot of people. Right. It's. Again, no matter how much we accomplish, no matter how much we achieve, it just never feels like it's enough. Like there's still this sort of hole there that needs to be filled. And so, you know, I, I need to make this much more money next year. Or, you know, I need to I need to buy that Mercedes or I need to get this bigger house or, you know, I, I need to become the, the, you know, the CEO because all of these things looking for external validation because we can't seem to find it internally. And so for me, it was about, you know, taking time to sit with myself and say, yeah, you've had failures, so has everyone else. Yeah, you, you know, there's been times where, where you know, you, you've struggled and I've fallen down and it's been hard to get back up, but so has everyone else. And, yeah, you've been in therapy and you've, you've, you've had to work on different parts of yourself. But, damn, if anything... That puts you at a, you know, in, in a much better position to help people. I don't want advice from from the person who's had a life that with zero failures and and, and and no heartache. You don't have anything to tell me, right? That's right. Yeah. That that mindset of like, no, there's there's people that I can help because of my struggle. Yeah. 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 You know, it, it, it's not like I said. I don't know what people get into. It, it, that's what it was. That's what I was going to say. You, you, you were sharing this, and let's we can incorporate that. Television. You had you had wrote this. You had wrote this down in just one of the uh, uh, bios. One of the bios. The money. Great bios <laughs> online. Te te television, movies, social media feeds in further into the into the problem. You were speaking about one thing with it, but. It, it creates stress and emotional like anxiety, but we can tie that in with let's just say all of that. How environment and those kind of things. Just can you speak to that regarding regarding yeah. that like that? It's really, absolutely. If we're already feeling this, you know, now think about the culture that we live in that values put such an a, 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 an intense value on achievement and and your network, yes. right? Yes. And yes. and. Yes. Not only that, but the constant bombardment and exposure that we have through social media, scrolling on Instagram or Facebook, and seeing what everyone else, seeing everyone's highlight reel, right? right? The beautiful relationship you have, the new car, and, and it's easy to sort of move into that social comparison of like, well, shit, I'm not there, and I wish I was there, and you know, um, so so yeah, we're constantly bombarded, and and. And again, it's it's that constant focus on achievement, 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 success, 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 and not, hey, when was the last time you sat down with, with a, a family, a friend, and had a conversation about vulnerability, about how they're feeling, about sometimes when they struggle, about life, about love, 
right? About that value. When we, when we feel those moments of connection, that's when we connect. Um, and so I think we're, we're actually starting to see a shift in our society moving away from it's all about achievement to one more of like, let's, let's connect with the, with the part of our human that, that wants to feel love, true, authentic, sincere, open love. Of, of opening ourselves, of, of taking off that mask and saying, look at me. Look at me in all of my glory and look at me in all of my fractured, broken ways and, I'm, and, and love me for that. And I think, man, if we, can move, if we can move people in that direction, we can change ideas, we, we can change society, we can change the way people love each other, we, we, can, we can remove hatred, right? Yeah. If, if we can do that, and I think it's, it's possible. These are the sorts of conversations that start that. I, and, and, and I believe, like, just like, I don't know, it was seven, I think like seven billion people on Earth or 7.8, something like that. Seven to eight billion people. Anyway, um, that's a lot of people. Yeah. And what I mean by that, the living, the dead, and the unborn. And when I say that, there are people when I say unborn that I'll say a, a reincarnation or salvation or a, a new birth um, and then healing. That's why I'm sharing. I'm, I'm saying this or the dead that they, let's just say they're going through life, mulling through life and they're dead and they have to be awakened unto these interactions. So that's why I'm not, some we can think literally um, some, but even in other ways that people can be dead while walking around. Um, you know, people can be unborn when they say, well, when did you wake up? Well, you know, not in my 30s or in my 40s or 50s. Oh, yeah. So what was all that before that? Well, it was something else, you know. So <laughs> it was so bad or it was crazy or it was nuts. Yeah. Or yeah. let me say, I was a other person. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> so, so that's why I'm uh, listening to what you're sharing and, and even other things that I didn't even get to. Um, all those nuggets and, and, and interventions and uh, a lot of tools you have in the tool bag, but you shared many things. You know, I think it's, it's, it's priceless. Um, the reason being, because I'm telling you, I'm telling you, when people are on those, those stages, and I mean, it, it's a great feeling. You know, I, you know years, years ago, um, years ago, I used to uh, uh, go to seminary, years I was in seminary school and um, went to different Christian schools, universities, and stuff. Did did well, but but still, there was a lot of things with entrepreneurship. But the, the bag fell out, you know, fell in holes. I'm deep in the earth somewhere. Nobody knows where I'm at. People know where I'm at. They don't want to help. You know, they're like, "Curse your life, it's over." And um, then then I got more into too as well, uh, just just teaching and, and years back, just getting getting more in business, getting more in business. But understanding more about healing now, not not only just within religion or church or uh, what I was connected with was like Baptist church, Christian, um, you know, salvation experience, but now crossing more into business where you're sharing the different modalities of healing and in the different in the different other quadrants, you know, that that go on not only just the soul and the spirit, but the mind. In the body, the will, and the intellect. So it's now getting more into the, the holistic as well, uh, not to uh, disregard the roots of things, but now cross it into a greater experience to give to people with more um, a, a more fruit, more substance, um, and uh, just that, just just that, you know, really a lot more substance, and uh, in a in a in a great in a greater way. So um, you know, just that kind of thing. So that's why I was just like, just reflected, just really just reflecting and, and there's some great things that's that's here i just i'm so glad to have I'm, see i'm gonna share this with you i would we i i was a part of a lot of uh, uh different like productions in uh la and, and films and movie stuff and uh productions and my stuff is on imdb as a producer um but i say that to say this i'm used to being online 
searching for people through people's profiles. So I'm used to that. And I'm used to put, you know, trying to find people that are either actors or whatever when I came to LA. So it turned, as I was working on that, I said, well, let me find these other professionals to, if you will, when you say cast, but have the right. talk sessions with cast that, that it's not just only, oh, it's an act. No, they're, they're really, they call them, and you may know this, day players. So if they, they were an actor that was a firefighter, they're a real firefighter. If uh, there were a police officer, they're a real police officer acting, but they're a real police officer. So psych, psychiatrist or um, dance movement therapist or medical doctor, that we're sitting down on the show, and, and I give credit, I give credits online to the people that's on this program uh, with IMDb uh, because it, it just it you know people shows because now COVID nineteen um, right. you can get credit you get show credits I don't know if you knew that but you get you get TV credits <laughs> you know that kind of stuff you know people they like the, you know people like the credits you know they say I was with, you know I was talking to so and so the credits but the thing is out in L A now the people really need everywhere but healing. And a lot yeah. of therapy going on. So yeah. that's why this show, I need to find people such as yourself that, that have, you're like, here, look, this is what I, this is what I possess or this is what I'm willing to share. And I'm like, good, can I, can I have that? Can you, are you willing to share that to, to for real so that, that, that I, we can disperse, um, disperse that through this, uh, this program and, and everything like that. Because I said, my gosh, this is, this is rich. This is rich rich yeah. and not rich like just to say it's rich uh within that rhetoric oh it's rich it's rich but but really it, it's uh, i know what i'm looking at and i know what i'm, I'm hearing and i'm like yeah i gotta I, i'm i'm uh, daily i mean daily i'm on computer I'm, I'm researching i'm writing i'm compiling a lot of things and um that that's why finding people such as yourself dr carlos i appreciate it dr garcia this series and 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 I and I hope we can. Uh, I hope to have you on stage when COVID nineteen is done and, and cut, fly out the out the, from Florida, and and get on this uh, this show where we can really stretch out and sit down, um, like yeah. I'm used to doing. Because it's not new. I'm just like you know. I, I'm I'll sit down in the studio. I was in Chicago. I did a show on um, one of the networks, and then I was trying to do a, a, a NBC. Spoke with a few people. It didn't. It wasn't time. And then I was looking at like uh, CBS. This was this was a while. And then when I came here, different networks. But I, I do um, want to bring forth more of a show, and not you know just only sit in this capacity. But yeah. I really enjoy sitting down with um, some real top. I would say top great people such as yourself. Thank you, my friend. I, I, I you don't understand that. That really touches my heart. I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I, you know, I, I love. I absolutely love what you're doing and, and you know when when i sort of did a little research on you and i'm like wow this guy's you know he's 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 really out there doing it right that that i have you know five six invites every week from some influencer somebody that you know wants to bring you on and, and they're always you know there, there's always something up their sleeve and from you i could tell right away it's like let's give value to, to other people how can we support each other and man, I, I have a ton of respect for that. I have a ton of respect for for your interviewing approach. Um, you know, I, I was just listening to Howard Stern the other day, or there was a conversation about Howard Stern and why he's such an amazing interviewer. And it's because, you know, he 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 learns about the people he's interviewing. He gets deep into the things. He he reads their books, or or, or you know, he knows about the person that that the, that that that's in front of them, and so. You know, I really admire that in you. Um, and my friend, we, I mean, I just like barely scratched the tippity top of the surface on some of these, some of these issues or some of these ideas. And so, you know, anytime, anytime you want to sit down and talk, whether it's in this way on a phone call or, or, or any other way, um, I want to teach you what, you know, what I've, what I've learned over the years and let's, let's pass on that information to those that need it. I'm really ambitious and not just a, not just zealously ambitious with the wisdom or understanding, but just at, I know it takes really sit down, set up a, a strat plan and, and, and what we, I've been very committed to this and I moved out to LA, you know, to bring forth this, this program and um, I was serious about it and, I, and I'll tell you, it took a lot of sacrifices and, 
and a lot of um, there was a lot of things that went on, you know, that really tried to to utterly destroy uh, the vision of things, you know, to be honest with you. And um, I understand dealing with different executives or, or different people. I, I'm telling you, when you said up the sleeve, it's like it's one thing where everything was good to go, but all of a sudden, uh-huh. and and that's what I'm like. Okay, okay let let and, and just share this with you. I was I was just sharing. Okay, well I'll, I'll wait till I off the uh, once I I'll, when I speak to you I'll share that part. But just uh, getting yeah. the the right the right things clicked in position. I'll say it like that. The right things clicked in position um, when things are very valuable, very just the you know just you don't want to place it in just anyone's hands. I'll just say I'll just put like that. That makes sense. You water yourself down. You water down the power of your message when you do that. You know, when 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 you allow, you know, when you allow people around you that that are. You know, don't don't have the same commitment um, to others, to, to you know, to, to helping others grow. And 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 I can pick up on it in, in five seconds when somebody's approach is, is is more about them than it is about you know other people. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> Is it, can you just share with people where you're at in Tampa, Florida? Is it around? Is right in Tampa? Yeah. Yeah. I'm in I'm in the Tampa Bay area. Um, I, I run a private practice out of here. Uh, I also run my consulting firm out of here. Um, mostly working with, with local entrepreneurs and business owners right now, uh, a few clients in sort of the Miami area. Um, and, um, and yeah, you know, just very connected to the community down here, try to, you know, get out there and, and you know, obviously I'm very connected with the Hispanic community down here as well, Hispanic business owners. And so, you know, any, anywhere that I can, you know, that I can help uh, support uh, people, whether it's, you know, emotionally, psychologically, or, or just, uh, you know, a pat on the back and, and say, hey, go get them, you know, whatever it is, I, I, I want to do that, you know. I had amazing people in my life that, that did that and allowed me, you know, I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for them, and I feel that it's my life's work to, to be able to pass that on and give to other people. So, but yeah, here, here in the Tampa Bay area. Is that uh? You have a website for it, or you want to share it too? I, I put it in the post too, but if you mind sharing it, yeah. So I, I have a couple of, <laughs> I have a couple websites. I have like three Facebook accounts, three Instagram accounts. <laughs> Uh, but probably my my uh, you can you can contact me at uh, Carlos at Tampa CW dot com. Uh, feel free to send me an email there. Um, go to my my main Instagram account, which is life, which is life underscore doc life doc life underscore doc. Um, I post a lot of content on there. I've been posting a lot of videos on there. You know, feel free to DM me. Um, you know. Uh, reach out, reach out to me, and if you have a, a question or a concern or an idea or just want to chat or you know wh- whatever it is, man. You know you were talking earlier about um, just you know in this in this this process of interviewing for you the the sort of research you do on people, and I, I can tell that sort of what was coming across is is something I experience a lot, and that's there are some just brilliant, fascinating stories and people out there. A lot. I think most of us have a, a really cool story or thing about us, and I want to I wanna be able to help people tell their story. And, you know, just like you, and, and like, man, we, we are, man. We're, we're resilient and amazing human beings, and we just, you know, we, we just need to part ways with, with, with some of these you know, feelings that get in the way sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah I know for me, just a, uh, now a higher, higher caliber, higher speed of people now uh, to get you. Now, that, now it's that time, I'd say. And it was, you know, during COVID-19 and now the right things are click, 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 you know, right in position. So I'm, I'm, ever, I'm really grateful for that. But just, um, yeah, let's do it to it. And, um, you know, uh, Dr. Carlos Garcia, uh, great things happening. Wanted to say it yet again. It's always with people's names. I really make sure to, with names, to really solidify that, put that out there in the universe, in the world, 
in on the stages, you know, and I'm very serious about that. Um, you know, to where people you might have heard this where they say, Man, you know, well you're you you get more a lot more invites than I get uh, now, you know, but you you get a lot of invites, but just that that being called upon and now being able to make it happen to speak like even people such as myself, you know, and, and gracing your presence with, with our platform and and just sharing that, and like you said, you know what the BS is versus what's the deal, you know. So you know, real quick, you know, you know what's the deal. And um, you know, I just really appreciate appreciate giving the opportunity to just even you know the flyers just market, put a little bit of marketing in there, a little just share it, you know. As um, I'm growing what I'm doing in LA, and um, because we're right in the we're on, we're on the West Coast, that's where we at, we in California, and um, we you know we was out in Chicago. Now we're well from down south, Mississippi, and then uh, years in the Air Force and all that. They went to Chicago um, for getting the TV, getting into hosting, those kind of things. Celebrate your life. Let's find out who you are. What do you do? Great things like that. Let's solve problems. And then came more now uh, with LA, and um, yeah. So now it's really this is good. This is very good. Um, but nevertheless, you just want the right people, the right mix, you know. I'll be out there in uh, I'll be out there in September. I might come okay. come and drop in on you. Have a, have some coffee or, or, or grab lunch, man. Look, look it, it, it's no sweat. They've been trying to open and close LA and those the OC and stuff. Look, it's no yeah. issue. No issue at all. I get it. You know, I'm findable. I, I'm findable in public. You know, so you know, it just is what it is. Some people they just hide. I understand certain people they. You know, you, you're working on things, you're quiet about projects you're working on, you ain't trying to say nothing. But uh, definitely, hey, I, I hope so. Um, and it's good or good. Matter of fact, when I get off, I'm just giving you, if that's okay, just a short call. Yeah. Once I get off the, the phone, uh, once we get off here, I'll just give you a short, short call. Uh, so, uh, everyone, this is for healing with Dr. David Brinder. Uh, we had uh, uh, Dr. Carlos Garcia in the B. <laughs> you like that? You know what I'm that? Hit that announce room. That's what you gotta hit that. Hot my hype man. <laughs> I got look. I got a lot of hype. I tell you, I, I got a lot. Of, I got. A, I can get announcer right on the room. So, so it's a lot of cool things. So definitely, uh, four healing. Great things happening. Thank you so much, everybody that had viewed Dr. Carlos. Definitely sharing amazing information. Check him out on Instagram. I, and just great things that's happened. So y'all have a wonderful evening. Dr. Garcia, thank you. And I'm going to give you a short call once we get on. All right. One minute. One minute. It's great. It's great. There we go. Great. So that's good. Do what we had to do. Excellent. Excellent powerhouse. So definitely, you all have a wonderful evening. Thanks for uh, staying tuned for healing with Dr. David Linder. There's some great things going on with great demonstrations, uh, well care, health care, uh, skin care that's going to be going on. So y'all have an amazing, amazing evening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.